Welcome to another night under the stars here in western South Dakota and the Dakota Starry Nights. What I have here is a homemade pier extension that was fabricated out of Schedule 40 PVC pipe and I have it mounted on an Orion Atlas AZEQ Pro to accommodate this Starwave 152 refractor. Now this is an Acro and it's been really good. I've had a lot of fun with it. This is the scope I use for rich field viewing, high contrast, and for night vision. It's fantastic. It'll go pretty deep with night vision. But let's go over to the shop and take a look at how to put one of these together. So what I got here is an Orion Atlas AZEQ Pro. And I want to put an extension on this. I mainly use this for visual work and I like to get it up about seven inches or so. So rather than purchase the extension that they sell, because <clears throat> it does have issues. If you guys bought it, you'll know the issues I'm talking about. It rocks and uh, it's not very stable and the screws strip out and a bunch of things. Just do a search on Cloudy Nights and you'll find out all the issues that it has. I also done a video here on Dakota Starry Nights on that extension and how to improve it and make it better. But I wanted to try something different and, and what I like about this, well at least in theory because I haven't done it yet, as you can see all the pieces are here. This will allow a guy to make an extension as long or as short as you'd like. Now what I'm looking for is about 7 inches. So what I've got here, this is Schedule 40 PVC plumbing, 4 inch and this is a uh, male to female and this here is a coupler that will connect the two ends of a four inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. So it will fit over here like that and then this one will come in here on the top and this will be glued up solid and that will give me about seven inches total once it's all glued up. So that's the collar and that's nice and strong. I mean, that's heavy. It shouldn't be a problem. So the way I'm planning on connecting them to the mount itself is with these caps. Now these caps will be put in like this on the base and like this on the equatorial head. And having it here on the equatorial head will allow you to screw the equatorial head right into the top here and then you'll cinch it down with this bolt that's provided by Orion or Skywatcher or Celestron because basically the Skywatcher or the Orion Atlas EQ and the Skywatcher version of this and the Celestron um, they all pretty much have the same tripod and the Atlas Pro uh, equatorial is the same tripod so this would work pretty much on any one of those. I do visual work so I'm not concerned about a polar alignment. If you were doing polar alignment you'll be able to turn it this way okay and then cinch it down. So for down here what I intend to do to keep it from rotating down here I'm gonna probably drill some quarter inch holes one here and one on that side and put an Allen head screw inside there to keep this from rotating up here. To lock it down on the tripod, it'll be mounting like this on the tripod and I'm just going to drill a hole here and here and then tap into the, the tripod platform and then just put a quarter inch bolt here and here and this will keep this from rotating so that when you put this here like that and screw it in, let's see, so you'll screw that down in there like that, okay and that's not going to rotate because it's on the platform for the tripod. And then I'll have grub screws here and here to lock it down. So that's the overview look of what I'm doing as far as this goes. Now the tricky part in the past has been the bolt. This is a 12 millimeter coarse thread. And rather than just go with this and have to monkey around with a bunch of different uh, configurations there, like I showed in the in the first video I did on a tripod extension. I decided that what I'm going to try, this is a coupler for a 12 millimeter coarse thread. So you'll use the same exact hardware that it comes with and you'll put this on here like that. 
get it threaded all the way, and then take this, this you'll have to buy this, okay, and then thread that in and then that couples it. And so now when you come in through the extension, you cut this to the height that, that you need. Now, in order to keep this from rotating, you could put Loctite, but I'm more of the opinion that something like this would be even better. And what this is, these are stainless steel uh, screws here, and I've got lock nuts for them. And this is a 6x32 stainless steel screw. So I'll drill a small hole right there and then another one here on this flat part and then run the screw through it like that. It has an opposite side that's flat and then take the lock nut and put it on there and lock these two so that they can't twist. A guy should be able to undo that if he needs to, shouldn't be a problem. And to me that's a much better solution than putting Loctite so that if you're taking your head off and you're unscrewing and unscrewing and unscrewing it, one night you might break that Loctite and then after a while it might start doing this and then all of a sudden it's loose and who knows, maybe even the, the head just falls off, right? I mean, I don't want to take that kind of chance. And what's, what I like about this is that now it's all still the same down here and you still use the same hardware all down here. Nothing's changed. You're just extending the bolt so that it reaches here and clears, clears the... Uh, the head. So that's the overview guys. I'm going to jump into this, get all, some of this put together and then we'll come back and we'll look at it and <laughs> see if it even works, right? Because, <laughs> you know, again, once again, you know, uh, you're looking at it as, as it unfolds and this is the idea, this is the theory and let's see if it actually flies. So in order to get the lock screw that's going to prevent this from rotating like that, I drilled a tap right here and then I will run this screw through there like that and that will go into the tap. If you have it in alt azimuth mode, you'll need to pitch this away from the base plate so that when you push through the drill and the tap you're not going to be hitting the bottom of your cap for your polar scope. In order to get that centered what I did was I centered up here with an X put this in here like that and then that got me in the center of this base. See, So now I know I'm in the center of the base and then I marked uh, drilled the hole there, marked it in there, removed it and drilled out the uh, tap for the uh, bolt that's going to hold this and keep this from spinning around. If you're going to put the mount head on the tripod and have no intentions of removing it periodically, like when you go to load and unload into the car or back into the house, then having one bolt here is sufficient. But if you have intentions of removing this mount head in order to make it lighter uh, to transport, then it's recommended that you put another bolt either here or someplace, put another tap to keep this from rotating. If this pivots like that, okay, now your center hole is off. So you're not going to be able to go in the center hole. So when you guide that bolt through there, it's going to be hitting up here and causing a lot of grief. So now we're looking at the top of the tripod and the adapter attached already with one screw. If you're using this 4 inch you need to come in from the threads from the outside here 5 16 and put a dot and then drill on a drill press go straight down in order to hit both of these holes that they have here for the alignment pin. And I'm just using those holes so I don't have to tap this out. And that will secure and keep this from rotating once it's all screwed down in there. So that kind of makes it easy because we're utilizing the holes that are already there. This is a half inch hole that allows this 12 millimeter bolt to go through so it's kind of centered up somewhat. When you drill this out on the drill press, you want to go slow because you'll be cutting into the rim here and you need to be able to get that bit to pull the material out of the rim and it tends to want to walk over in this direction. 
So you want to keep that some pressure pushed against the drill bit going back in this direction. This was a first try hole and it didn't work out. It was too close to the center and I couldn't get it to center up on the tripod head. So no big deal. You've got another chance here to get it right. This will be inside anyway so it doesn't really matter. That hole's not going to hurt one thing or another. So there it is with the mount adapter attached to the tripod. Just slip it over that bolt and then underneath here is where that coupling is that's joining the standard hardware that comes with it. And so then from here we take this pier collar that will go over here and then this tightens down like that. Okay, screws in. It's pretty neat. And so far it's working out pretty good guys. Initially you just drill a half inch hole in order to find centers on your tripod base and your mount head. But after you've established that, you should re-drill it out uh, to about three quarters of an inch or so in order to allow the bolt some wiggle room when you go to screw it up in there. It's not bound between this small aperture and that small aperture because then the bolt could bind like that inside there. So this will give it some wiggle room so when you lift the bolt up in there it's got some wiggle room. So this one hasn't been done. This one is for the uh, tripod itself and I'm going to drill that out, make it a little bit bigger in order to meet up to the top. When you're gluing this up you might want to keep these mold marks uh, aligned you know just so that it looks symmetrical. Hey you don't have to do it but I know some guys really like good looking equipment. And the cool thing about this, you can make it longer if you want. I used a coupler that put these together, but if I wanted to make it longer, I would switch this to a female, uh, this threaded adapter to a female on the bottom in order to receive a pipe to make it longer. So you can make any length you want, just make sure that the bolt is right. In order to determine the length of the bolt that you're going to need, you need to assemble this first, the pier extension, screw it down onto the tripod, then connect your bolt to the stock bolt that comes with the mount. You simply take a straight edge like that and then mark where it intersects and cut it off at that point. So after you've cut the bolt off you want to file it down, you know, clean it up, wire brush it because remember this end is going to be going inside the equatorial head which is aluminum and you don't want that to be uh, tearing up the threads. It's probably a good idea to put a couple of drops of oil on that as well to keep it lubricated if you are removing it on and off repeatedly. Now in order to keep this from spinning around when you go to drill through there, you want to run that bolt that you cut that's going into the bottom of the equatorial head right up to it and that snugs the two up so they don't go spinning around when you go to drill your hole for the bolt to lock these up. You also want this hole up high enough to where when you thread this through the bottom of the tripod, this will extend past the base a little bit. But if you pull this bolt too far down you won't be able to thread your lock bolt through here because it'll be below the access point of this hole. So be sure to measure that up first. You want to run this bolt here through the bottom of the tripod like you normally would, thread this onto it and then push this up all the way to see if there's enough room to get this on because you need to do that uh, first thread that in, lock it up, and then put this one on. So here's what I'm talking about, about that bottom bolt happening to be up high enough to where you can get clearance on a screwdriver and a nut driver because this is going to be setting down in here like that, see? So it has to be high enough to where when you pull it up you can attach that screw. 
So here it is already pre-drilled and I've got one of the lock bolts in place. And you put that in place before you separate these and this needs to be separated so I can get this into the bottom of the tripod. And then once that's in then I'll go ahead and screw this to that, put the lock bolt in, then slide this plate adapter over the top of this and uh, should be able to just put it all together at that point. Okay so there it is. It's nice and solid. And now I only have to raise my legs just about, oh, maybe two inches to get it to the 38 inch height that I like. And I also like to mention that this is a five and a quarter inch uh, diameter, whereas the one they sell is only four. So this has a little bit beefier look to it and it displaces the weight a little bit better. And the cool thing about this is you can make whatever length you desire so long as you have the bolt length correct. I showed you how to do that in the shop. And another tip I'd like to pass along, if you want to remove the stickers, the barcodes that come with this without damaging the surface, use lacquer thinner. A nail polish remover or a lacquer thinner will take those that sticker glue off. I have an Apollo 50th anniversary sticker here that I got from the South Dakota Space Grant Consortium and looks pretty cool and I kind of like it because this white kind of reminds me of one of the uh, stages on the Saturn uh, 5 rocket maybe the uh, service module stage so it's kind of cool I was thinking of painting it black but I'm gonna keep it like that cause I like it and you don't have to worry about it scratching up enjoy the night sky I'm out here we've got a moon coming up here and Aristarchus uh, Crater and the Cobra is going to be right on the Terminator and I'm really excited to look at it through bino views and so until next time clear skies and keep her polar aligned.